Welcome back to the channel. I am that beard mechanic. Today we're gonna to be replacing spark plug wires, cap and rotor on a 2000 Honda CRV. This is gonna be for the 97 to 2001 Honda CRVs. Parts lists and uh, tools needed are gonna be down below. Let's get to it. All right. The first thing you're gonna to want to do when doing your uh, cap and rotor is disconnect the battery. Grab your 10 belt. Disconnect the negative. And do it, and just stuff that over the side. Okay, once you've got the battery disconnected, you're gonna go ahead and remove the air box. So you can actually have clearance to get this up and out of the way. Um, you got two 10 mil bolts here. They're both the same size. You can go right back in either place. And then you've got a little mounting spot here with a little rubber grommet. You're gonna grab a pry bar. You're gonna come down from the radiator side here. And you're just gonna slide it in there. You can see the pry bar here. You're gonna slide it underneath the mount and just push up and it will slip off that little grommet. And then you're gonna lift up and out and away and disconnect it from here just by sliding it out. Okay, and with the air box actually moved now and out of the way, you've got one eight millimeter bolt underneath here, right in line with the, uh, the hose here. You'll have one up here and you have one up here. I've already removed and loosened them. So now you can take your cap and proceed to slide it off. Now, as you can see here, the orientation of my rotor is incorrect. I won't be able to get the set screw that is back here. So I need to bump the ignition a couple degrees over to about, uh, when you're looking at it squared this way, at about the seven o'clock position, there is a, an opening back here where you can get a screwdriver in here. Do not pry on this. There's a set screw that holds it in. You won't be able to get it off. You'll break it, damage it, then you'll be up Shit's Creek. So in order to bump the ignition, put the negative back on the battery. You're gonna come over to your key, and you're just gonna cycle it to start it for a fraction of a second and turn it off. You're not gonna do much of a turn. You don't want it to start. You don't wanna sit there and crank on it and continue cycling it. You just wanna bump it over and then come over and you'll see that it's now at the 12 o'clock position. You can do this with the uh, cap off. I'm gonna come back over, give it another little bump. I think that should probably do it right there. So we're gonna come back over and you can see now we are at the three o'clock position Okay, now that we have the uh, rotor bumped over to the correct position, we can gain access to the set screw here. It is a number two screw. I str can't stress enough that you need to use a number two Phillips uh, screwdriver. Do not use anything else. Don't try and use a number one or anything like that. You will strip it out. And then that's a whole hell of a pain in the ass to get that out of there. Use a number two Phillips screwdriver. Use a shorty. Or if you have to uh, use a long one, you will need to remove the uh, air intake inlet. There's just a quarter inch bolt up here. As you can see, I snapped mine. It was completely rusted out, even though I used uh, deep creep. Um, so I'm gonna have to go to the junkyard tomorrow and uh, replace that. So do that and then slide it out of the way. You'll have uh, one connector here. It's just a little hose clamp right there. Just squeeze it, slide it out, get to go. Get in there. I suggest putting force against the screw uh, with the screwdriver, like pushing in this way, and then twist as hard as you can with one single twist uh, to get that loose. It'll basically snap, and uh, you'll be able to uh, back it out. And you're good to go. I've already got it out, so I'm going to go ahead and slide this off. It's easy as that, and uh, good to go. As you can see, this one is. Pretty old, seen much better days. We're gonna put in the new one. And putting in the new one is just as easy as this. There's no wrong way to put it on there. It has a flat side and a rounded side. I'm just gonna orient it to where the other one was and then just slide it all the way in there. Grab your Screw. 
Okay, now that you're at this point, you've got the new rotor on, you've uh, installed the screw, you're now going to remove this little gasket that's around the edges. Your cap should come with a gasket. I highly suggest replacing it. I can already feel that this one is very dry rotted and nasty. As you can see, look at all that crap that's on the bottom of that. You can already feel the difference too, that this is a lot smaller. It's a lot, it's, sh it's shrunken. So we'll throw that away. And this new one is way better. Just use a small pick or a tiny flathead screwdriver, just gently pry and then just slide it around and slip it off. Make sure you install the new one in the correct orientation. Just push it into place. Make sure it is all the way installed into the small channel. If you don't, you're gonna run the risk of getting any water, debris, etc., into this cap and rotor assembly, and then you're gonna have starting and running issues, and you don't want that. Take your time, do it right the first time. There, easy. Then you're gonna grab your cap, and you're going to slide it over top, and you'll notice that this new cap actually comes with new bolts. So that's a nice bonus. Only thing uh, I'm going to note with this cap is that these bolts are 7 mil. Okay, now that you've uh, tightened on your cap, make sure these are just snug. Do not crank these down. Um, I suggest using the, um, the number two Phillips screwdriver. They have a, a Phillips head inside of this uh, bolt. And snug them down. Try and make sure it's all squared on there. You crack this cap, you need a new one. No amount of JB, Weld, Bondo, whatever the hell you want to put on here will save this thing. Just do it right, take your time, don't break this cap. Okay, now you're wondering why I probably left this on here. Uh, just to make it easier for some of you guys, as a little trick for the orientation of replacing the, uh, the cap with the original plug wires. If you don't plan on replacing the plug wires, this will help you to make sure you don't get any misfire issues. You're going to notice that there's this little bar on here. That little bar matches this one. So the orientation would be the top of here. So what you would do then is take this plug wire and orient it and index it onto here. Plug it into there. And then take that one below it and plug it into there. Take that one across from it and plug it into there. Take this one above it and plug it into there and you'll have the correct firing order. You can also use this as a template for installing your new plug wires to make sure that you get them correctly as well. Just a little trick if you don't want to write them down or anything like that. Just make sure you get it right so you don't have any misfire issues or running issues. And there you go. Simple as that. Brand new plug wires in there. Brand new cap rotor. Ready to rock and roll with the brand new spark plugs if you watched the video previous to this one. And uh, yeah, just button roll up, the air box back in, the air inlet back in, make sure you put your throttle cable back in this little bracket, and uh, pop in the negative starter up, and uh, you should notice a substantial amount of uh, power compared to what it was before. You have better spark, better starting. And uh, yeah, good to go. Hope this helps somebody out there. Check out the video right here. Check out the video up here and subscribe right there. Until next time, cheers.